Welcome back. Today we're at one of our commercial projects in Devon. Uh, we're going to be going through some more basket installation. We've got a bit of ducting to chuck in as well. Uh, we're going to, I'll go through with you how we keep our levels the same throughout the whole building, how we make up our trapeze, um, and yeah, we'll crack on with some work. Right, come here a minute. For those of you who don't know, if you can't tell, this is James, <laughs> my twin brother. All right. So he's just here working with me on a weekend, bit of extra cash. Um, doesn't work very hard, really. I work very but... hard. <laughs> I work very much harder than you do. Oh, I don't know. But teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, first things first, we want to get ourselves set a datum line. So typically, in a commercial site, the builders will have set out a one meter from finished floor level datum line anyway, but I like to set my own datum line that's actually appropriate to what we're doing. So I will find what I've done, I've worked out my ceiling height, so that's the underside of my ceiling. Then this 50 mil gap here is the actual build up of my ceiling. So we've got two layers of plasterboard and a 25 mil metal top hat, which the plasterboard fixes to. Um, now to the underside of this steel to there is 80 millimeters. My basket is 60 millimeters. So I want, to, I want to keep my basket as tight to this as possible. So I've set that height line there at 60 millimeters down from the steel. So that I know that is the lowest point at any point in this building I want my basket to be. So that then we, we don't end up clashing with the ceiling at any point. We can go above that anywhere as long as we don't go beneath that datum line. Okay, so next thing we want to get our, our height set but throughout the whole building. So we've, we've marked our height here at 20 millimeters above the top of the ceiling, uh, the inside of the ceiling there. So what I'll do, I'll have already had all my rod hangers in, they're all hanging in place. So what you'll see now, the way that laser is, it's gonna, oh, you might not be able to see it, it strikes on the rod each time. Okay, so that is my level line all the way through the building. Now what I would do is I'll go in and wind my nuts on up to that point, I'll slab my uni strut up, I'll get all my trapezes built up off of that. Um, I will then level each trapeze from left to right with a bolt level rather than using my spirit, my laser, because as you get further through the building, the more trapezes you have up, the less of the laser line you're gonna be able to see. So I'll keep the left hand side all set by the laser and the right hand side will level with a bolt level. Just wanna show you some of the fixings we're using here. So these are the Hilti XHS M10 rod hangers. Uh, they normally come with a nail in because uh, they are for use with the DX tools. So that's the cartridge tools that use the gunpowder cartridges. Uh, so they fire into concrete and steel. Uh, what I've been doing is taking the nail out, putting in a self-drilling tech screw, and then we can just roll, uh, screw straight into the roll steel joists. Um, these, if you actually get these from Hilti directly online, they're really expensive, about £2.50 each. Um, on a job like this, you need hundreds of them, so it's quite expensive. But people pinch them quite a lot on commercial sites because they're Hilti and then sell them on eBay. Uh, but they don't know what they're really worth. So I, I picked up about 200 of these for about 35 quid on eBay the other day. So it's always worth shopping around. Um, but that, <coughs> yeah, that's the fixings we'll be using anyway. Okay, so build up of our trapeze. We, obviously, we, we have, I've gone through our hangers. So we've got the Hilti XHS M10 rod hangers. Our M10 rod into that. So we screw those in straight away once we've got it all fixed in. We've cut our uni strut to length. Now on here then I wind on an M10 nut. I then put an M10 flat washer, sometimes a serrated washer as well, if it's required in your specification. Uh, and then we have a M10 square plate washer. Then we literally put our unistrut up and then exact opposite on the other side. So we do an M10 square plate washer, an M10 washer and an M10 nut and plus a serrated washer if you need it. Tighten all that up. What I do is I do on one side, I get this side set and to, to my laser line. 
I'll then put my bolt level on the underside and then set the other side off of my bolt level and clamp it all into place like that. Another way of doing this, if, if you're limited on space here, if you put an M10 spring nut or a channel nut or a Zebedee, whatever you want to call it, inside of your, your uni strut and you can wind your M10 rod straight into the uni strut and then have the same build up on the top here. So you'll have your Zebedee inside with an M10 square plate washer, a flat washer and a nut. And that'll actually clamp it all in just in the uni strut. And you'll have nothing on the underside. It looks really tidy as well. Um, and it helps if you're limited on space. Okay, that's it from us today. We've had enough. We're gonna pick up and go home. Um, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, get in the comments, let us know what you think. If you wanna see more content like what we've done today, um, let me know if you wanna see more of him or not. <laughs> I'd imagine probably not, but um, yeah, thanks guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, just stop. <laughs> <laughs>